And now, live from the Elite Ringside Network Studios, it's the Elite Ringside Network WWE Fast Lane Prediction Special. And here are your hosts, Spencer Hart and the Elite Ringside Network Heavyweight Champion, Chris Lockman. What is going on, everybody? It is the Elite Ringside Network Fast Lane Prediction Special here on Spreaker.com, iTunes, Player.fm, PodDirectory.com, Stitcher.com, TuneIn Radio, IWNerd.com, WrestleWorld.uk, on Google Play now for all of you fun Android users. You can download our show and listen to us wherever you are. We're also on the Satchel Player for your Android and iPhones. Of course, joined here by the Elite Ringside Network heavyweight champion, Mr. Chris Lockman. How you doing, my friend? Always good, man. How about you? I'm doing well. It's uh, been a long couple of weeks on the road to fast lane, so I, I'm I'm a little skeptical about where everything's going, but <laughs> I'm hoping for the best on the road to WrestleMania. So um, it, does, it does feel like we're in the slow lane, getting to fast lane, which yeah. then gets us to WrestleMania. Is that how it yeah, goes? Yeah, that's that's how it is for the last couple of years. So we have to <laughs> suffer through another Roman Reigns match. So. Um, we are here to make our fast lane predictions, uh, fast lane predictions for the Elite Ringside Network Heavyweight Championship. Um, it is finally a one-on-one match. The last time I've contended for this belt, it's been triple threats and fatal four ways and a lot of people. So <laughs> it's a one-on-one battle. Um, so what do you say, my friend? Let's get into it. Let's do it. All right. The following predictions are scheduled for WWE Fastlane and they're for the Elite Ringside Network Heavyweight Championship. All right, my friend, let's get into the first match. Uh, it is going to be Sasha Banks versus Nia Jax. Um, I'm thinking so. Um, you know what? I'm not quite sure the official... Uh, I would assume that the cruiserweight match would be on the kickoff show, and that's quite terrible, actually, uh, because I love the cruiserweights. You know, let's start with the kickoff show, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's start <laughs> with the kickoff show. Uh, then let's go with the cruiserweight match. Um, it's going to be the uh, champion Neville versus Jack Gallagher. No, 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 no. That's a, that's a whole different one too. This is a this is a throw together match that was on uh, added, I believe, as of Monday. Well, then what am the, I uh, looking at? <laughs> I have no idea. It's the uh, cruiserweight tag team match featuring Rich Swan and Akira Tozawa taking on the Brian Kendrick and Noam Dar. Okay, so that makes much more sense. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm gonna pull up another fast lane card here because the Bleacher Report just completely let me down. Sure. Off off to a great start. <laughs> We're off to a fantastic start already. Um, right. Yeah, so... Uh, if I have to sit through another one of these Noam Dar segments, I'm... Ugh. <laughs> Rich Swan's going to be coming back. Um, he's been out with an injury for the last... It's been a month already, hasn't it? Something like that. It, it's been very hard for me to follow 205 Live. Um, yeah. just because of how watered down it has been since, you know, the cruiserweights came back with the CWC. Um, I've actually been hearing some, some rumors here and there that they might actually even just already cut ties with 205 live. Yeah. Um, in, I mean, I guess at this point I would be okay with that just because it hasn't been what we expected it to be when they brought the cruiserweights back. Uh, but if they allowed these guys to actually get out there and actually put some time into the matches instead of making this a glorified uh, superstars or main event, mm-hmm. I, I think it would be a lot better. And especially if you just move the cruiserweights off of Raw, don't put them on Raw, don't put them on SmackDown, just have them be their own entity, I think you're going to allow them to actually do a lot more. Um, but it, as far as this goes, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take the lead on this one first. Since since I am the reigning champion, I'll, I'll start this one off. Um I'm actually going to go with Rich Swan and Akira Tozawa. Uh, reason being, 
it, it does seem that, you know, now that we're starting to actually see a few of the heels, you know, face heel dynamic or whatever in the cruiserweight division kind of being a little bit more uh, cut and dry, I guess, you know, you're starting to see it kind of even out a little more. Um, I, I just think that, you know, bringing in Akira Tozawa, um, especially in this role, I think the match is really going to be centered around him and really focusing on making him look good since he's going to be kind of the newer name uh, coming into the, the cruiserweight scene now. So um, the only thing that worries me about this is, you know, obviously Tozawa has mainly worked as a heel. And so, you know, obviously in the back of my mind, I kind of have that little bit of doubt that, you know, maybe he'll actually turn on Rich Swan and start a program, you know, between those two. Uh, but as of right now, I think the best way to go would be to just have him have him look good, have him showcased in this match, and then he will get the win. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Swan and Tozawa for this one. I agree. I'm gonna take Swan and Tozawa, um, mainly because the the program fits, uh, especially with Kati- uh, Akira and the Brian Kendrick. Um, Tozawa's gonna pick up the win against him, um, and Rich Swan, like I said, has been gone for almost a month now, and. You know, m- m- most of the time when a returning superstar comes back, they pick up the win. So I'm going to take that one on the pre-show. That one's, I feel like that's a no-brainer, but I've been wrong before. Um, yeah, like I said, the only thing that worries me is the possibility of maybe an, uh, a Tazawa, you know, real heel turn on Swan, costing them the match, and then the heels get the win there. But yeah. I, I just think that that's something you can save for a later date. So Right. Uh, let's let's save the championship matches until later. Let's move on to Roman Reigns versus Braun Strowman. You know, I read an interesting article about this today on What Culture, and it it, it really um it really made a good point, and it's going to be my prediction. Um, I am going to predict that this match is going to end via countout. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a no contest on this match. Reason being is the WWE can't really afford to put one man over the other. That being said, knowing Vince McMahon, Roman Reigns will probably win. But um, I don't know this match going into WrestleMania. Um, I think it's gonna end in a in a uh, a no contest. Nobody's gonna win. It's going to be a count out, some form of no contest. Um, what do you think? How how would you score that then? Like what what happens? I mean, if you if you take that, you get that right. Like you get a point for that. But then, you know, like do you want me to be how, more how specific? Be well, I just I mean, because if it's a no contest, though, doesn't the match you know basically between our picks? Wouldn't that just get thrown out? And it would just be like a wash, like the match never happened, and then we just move on from there. You know, like it's a very good point yeah in the past yeah. we've thrown out no contests um right in that case then i'll take i'll take braun Strowman via shenanigans uh sure. he'll win by some heelish move um and then they'll set up a program or they'll continue their program for a while um and then oh you know what now that i think about it yeah, I'm going to take Braun Strowman for the win. Um, mm-hmm. But I think they'll start setting up the Taker-Roman match. Okay. So... See, I'm, I'm kind of... I'm, I'm with you there, but, I, like, on the opposite side of it. So, like, for me, oh, looking at this match yeah. on paper, with you know, obviously, I, I think Roman actually really is... I mean, betting-wise, I'm looking at the betting odds and stuff as well. And he's a little bit of a favorite over Strowman, but it's probably the closest match that's on the entire card as far as betting odds go. Mm -hmm. Um, That being said, uh, I will say that Undertaker obviously will show up during this match. Um, So if we want to do a bonus point for if Taker comes in or he doesn't. um, But I'm going to go with the fact that Taker will show up in this match. And instead of costing Roman, I think he's going to cost Strowman instead. I think he's going to cost Braun. Uh, and because I think it's going to be a better setup going into WrestleMania if you did have, let's say, Undertaker versus Strowman rather than Undertaker versus Reigns. Mm-hmm. I just think it'll be far better received if WWE were to go that way. Um, not only have you built up, you know, Strowman to be this beast of a man lately. Um, the only other thing that I, this is what gets me though too here is the only other thing that gets me about this is if you have Taker come out and cost one of them the win. 
you know, I mean, yeah, he could cost Roman the win and lead to a program or whatever. And then, you know, what do you do with Strowman for Mania? Does he just go into the Battle Royal? Mm-hmm. Uh... So, no, I, I just talked myself out of this. Okay, we're going <laughs> to – let me restart this. I'm going to take – I'm going to take Strowman. I am going to take Strowman here. And it's because, again, the taker interference that will come out for the distraction, Strowman picks up the, rin- the win over Reigns in a non-clean fashion. Therefore, then now all of a sudden Reigns has the, the beef with Undertaker going into WrestleMania. And honestly, like now that I think about it, Strowman is actually going to be my pick at WrestleMania to win that battle royal. So, yeah, let's let's do it that way. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Braun on this one as well due to taker interference. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, that is my final answer on this one. Uh, it, it just, it was one of those things I've been, I've been back and forth. Like this one to me has basically been a coin flip the entire way right. from the time that we knew this was going to be a match. I mean, flip a coin. I really don't care, honestly, uh, who wins this one, because I, I just think it's, it's just filler until they set up their storylines for WrestleMania. So. Right. Yeah. And you know, like I said before, WWE really can't afford to just, cleanly put one of these guys over because they've tried to build both of these guys up to be these mega main eventers so right. um, yeah so we'll move on to the next singles match uh, Sami Zayn versus Samoa Joe um, yeah th- this match it, unless you disagree with me I'm almost positive Seth Rollins was supposed to be in this slot right here uh, with Samoa right. Joe um, so right. Sami Zayn got thrown into this match and <laughs> I'm going to take Sami Zayn. Uh, and wow. here's, here's my reason why. Wow. Um, if you have Sami Zayn pick up the win, you have got you can have Rollins work a program against Triple H saying, oh, you sent this big Samoan out to, you know, to end me once and for all, and he was beaten by Sami Zayn. Now look at him. He's nothing. And question the the thought process of Triple H, in my opinion. That's what I think. If Sammy wins, you kind of, um, how how am I trying to put this? You kind of negate the Samoa Joe aspect of this feud. Because I, I have a feeling that's what they were trying to do to set up this match. So if if Seth wins, he'd go on to face Triple H. Um, sure. But I don't know. What do you think? I, you know, I got to be honest on this one that you're so far off base on this it's not even (laughs) funny like looking at even just betting odds alone like you you bring in Samoa Joe you have him make this huge impact you know going after Rollins right away obviously the unfortunate injury at the time it happens Mm -hmm. uh but no I mean I I agree with the fact that it was probably supposed to be Rollins versus Joe here uh going forward just to kind of continue that storyline there uh in which case if it would have been Rollins versus Joe I I would have picked Rollins but because of what this is, and, you know, Sami Zayn, obviously, again, the nickname, the underdog from the underground, it's there for a reason. And he's always the consummate underdog. Uh, obviously, in this match, he is as well. And uh, honestly, I just, I think it's going to be a hell of a match. This this match for me on this card could be one of the best matches that we see all of Sunday. Yeah, it could be a show it, stealer. Exactly. But when it does come down to it, it's going to be a hell of a match no matter what. But Joe is going to get the win on this because Joe needs to continue to look strong the way that they've built him up mm-hmm. in the short time that he's actually been on the main roster. So right. I'm going to go with Joe here, um, and it's, but again, it's it's going to be a solid, solid match. Just curious, what are the betting odds on this match? <laughs> you really want to know? <laughs> I, I do, because now I'm, you... You, you talk that out, and I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> are you going to change your answer if I no, tell you the betting I, No, odds? I, I will lock in my answer for this match, but what's the uh, betting odds? Samoa Joe minus 2,000, Sami Zayn plus 1,000. <laughs> so it is a huge, huge spread here, uh, meaning that if you bet $100, uh, or no, you'd have to... God, what is it now? i got to remember how to do this. It's it's basically the whole thing. If you bet a hundred dollars on something, how much would you get back in return, or how much would you have to bet to win a hundred dollars? If I have to bet two thousand to win one hundred dollars, I'm not taking that bet. <laughs> but I mean, as far as this goes for our picks, I'm going with Samoa Joe here. Fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, no, and, and like a lot of the time, I I will say this: I do look at betting odds a lot when I do make my picks. It does mm-hmm. factor in because. Vegas, for whatever reason, even any of the sites that actually allow you to bet on professional wrestling, I mean, it's mainly just WWE, but even still, I've been trying to keep track of, you know, seeing the betting odds before and then looking at the results and seeing kind of where they were at. A lot of the time, it's spot on. 
It, Vegas knows what they're doing. They've been making money off of you know sports 